Stephanie Belflant joins us now, and today we're talking about a minimally invasive procedure to correct pelvis prolapse. Now, if you have questions, you can send them to the doctors at WLVT.net. You know, I was not aware of it. This obviously is really common. Um, so common that we have an expert <laughs> joining us today is Dr. Robert Harris. He is a urogynecologist with Baptist Health System. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Explain as best you can what is pelvis prolapse. Well, pelvic prolapse is really vaginal prolapse. And women, as they age, maybe have children, they lose some support of the muscles. They kind of form a web in the pelvis. And as those muscles weaken, then pressure or straining or years of just aging can cause these organs to kind of herniate into the vagina, the bladder, the rectum, or the vagina itself can simply evert. That's a horrible thing. Jeez. <laughs> it really is. It is. So, so now you have this new minimally invasive procedure. I'm that sorry, corrected. but the word minimally invasive <laughs> when you're talking about yeah. the vagina just does not get I guess there are levels of invasiveness. <laughs> yeah. That just sounds scary. Um, well, the beauty of the procedures now are that that they are minimally invasive. Any surgery is invasive. Right. But what happens with these surgeries, they used to be open. We used to have to uh, take a knife and open women's tummies, which caused scarring and hospitalization for a few days. We're taking the exact surgery now and turning it into three tiny or four tiny little incisions and repeating that procedure exactly as if we were doing it open. And now it's an overnight stay, very little pain, back to work in a week. It's really changed the whole face of how we take care of these women. How dangerous is this uh, pelvic prolapse to women? How this is Dr. Is Harris, by the way, that you're watching doing this particular procedure. Um, it's, it's more of a quality of life issue for women instead of an actual health danger. There can be risks of difficulty emptying your bladder or, or pain or quality of life issues like sexual issues that women have. But for the most part, these are strictly quality of life. And women come to us and say, look, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of not being able to control my bladder function, having this bulge, not having good feeling down there. How can you help me? And so that's what we do. Now, what are you doing there? This is actual some footage of the procedure itself. And we're inside the, the lady's abdomen with these tiny little ins, uh, instruments. And right now, we're having to remove some of the adhesions and things that are in the way mm -hmm. before we get the actual operation. And so what you're going to do, you just kind of sling them up, don't you? It's very much like a sling. We take mesh and we attach it to the vagina from the inside, and then we attach it to a ligament that runs over the backbone. And uh, that procedure, again, used to take a couple hours with a big tummy incision. Now it's about an hour and 15 minutes. You're out of the hospital sometimes that day other times staying overnight. What are the chances of you having to go back and, and do this later on? I mean, I've heard people that have had the, the bladder sling right. operation before. They've had to go back in and have that done a, a time or two later. What about this procedure? That's right. That's a slightly different operation, the bladder sling. But even that now is done using mesh. And the key, I think, to the discussion is that in the traditional procedures, we use women's tissue. And when you're depending on tissue that's already herniated, it's probably not a positive. Is that the mesh we're seeing That's right there? That's the mesh. So now that we've added mesh, those procedures that in the past may have had to be repeated are much less so now. If you look at outcomes from these specific procedures, the laparoscopic sacral colpopexy, only about 5% of these have any recurrence. So these are uh, very, very rarely do have any recurrent issues with these. That looks like a fish and tackle box. I'm sorry. It is sort of that. It's very similar. Uh, we have our own type tackle boxes in the operating room. Now, what about the age? Is there a certain age, or can this happen to a woman at any time uh, in her life? It can happen at any time. Some women will have a very traumatic delivery that may just cause significant damage to the pelvis, through the nerves in the pelvis. And I've seen women as young as 25 who have very little control of their bladder or bowel. Um, if you look at hysterectomy, specifically, women over 55, pelvic prolapse is the number one indication for hysterectomy. Overall, it's the third largest indication for hysterectomy. So it's very, very common. What about the pelvic, uh, when you get pelvic cysts? Can that, if they get big enough, can they also cause this problem? It's a different issue. Uh, no. What occurs in pelvic cysts is totally different. It's a functional aspect of the ovary. And what we're dealing with is strictly support issues. Okay. That's amazing. It really is. And it's amazing to watch you work. It's a pretty neat thing. And it's especially in and of itself. My partners, Dr. Spitz and I, we don't do anything else. We don't do general GYN. We don't deliver babies. We just take care of women with bowel, bladder, and pelvic support problems. And that's because so. it is in that much demand. How many surgeries a week would you it's say? very much in demand. He and I do about 700 surgeries annually. And wow. we're the, the only two fellowship trained urogynecologists in Mississippi. Well, that's more um, than one So we day. do lots of, lots of stuff. Get patients from all around the region. 
All right. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more with Dr. Harris in just a few moments. You can send us your emails at the doctors at WLBT.net. We are talking about, I'm not going to even say minimally invasive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just invasive. Dr. Yes, Dr. Harris is here. Well, we're talking about pelvic prolapse, and that's, that is a very real problem for a lot of women. And um, you say the biggest problem with it is incontinence. Yeah, I think most most women we see come in with problems with difficulty controlling their bladders. And most of that is with coughing and sneezing or exercise or jumping on a trampoline, anything that causes pressure. And it's because of support loss. So we also have very actually minimally invasive procedures for that. that are <laughs> even more minimally invasive. Even more so than the... Uh, <laughs> but those are procedures that are strictly outpatient, about 15 minutes in home. So oh, really? that has that really good. changed the way that we've treated those patients, and we do several of those every week. Oh, it um, used to be such an ordeal, too. Again, we use mesh, and there's, there's a lot of fear out there because, you know, my mom had, uh, it's all that my mom had a bladder suspension. It was horrible, and that's really changed. It's not that way anymore. And it's, a lot of it's because of technology, and a lot of it's because of more specialization and focus just on specific problems. Now, I, I know that most of us are living longer, and uh, they say 30 is the new 20, and 50 is the new, all of that stuff. So with, the, with us living longer, do you expect to see more women with these conditions, especially those who have children? Absolutely. It's the, like I said earlier, it's the biggest indication for hysterectomy in women over 55, and as the baby boomers continue to age, it's just going to increase substantially. Every year, about a half a million procedures are done for pelvic prolapse. How would a woman have any remote clue that she would have this condition? Would she know that? Most women feel it. Usually it's with wiping. They'll feel something there. It's just, I think, a nice way to consider it is, you know, most people know what a hernia is. But when you mention hernia, everyone looks at their tummy. It's like, I have a hernia. But this is truly a herniation of organs that surround the vagina. And it could be your bladder herni herniating into your vagina or your rectum or the top of the vagina, but any time you feel a bulge, many women will say, I see something down there, or I noticed it, or my husband noticed it. And then it causes pressure, discomfort, and all these other issues that I mentioned earlier. So it's possible that it, there could be a little bit of pain involved. Yeah, and there are many women who have absolutely no symptoms. They know okay. they have it, and there's really, like I said earlier, no specific danger, but it's important to at least get that evaluated, because it needs to be followed. There can be danger down the road. And we need to counsel those patients. We do a lot of non-surgical stuff for women, too. You know, and the women who don't have issues that are leading them to surgery at this point, we're able to, we have two nurse practitioners that have about 25 years of experience in treating women with pelvic prolapse and urinary problems. And so they do a lot of pelvic muscle rehabilitation. They use something called pessaries, silicone devices that actually fit inside to hold bulges up. Lots of options that you don't always have to have surgery for this. Uh, it can also affect your sex life if you have this. Obviously, you've got, what, this toxic cesspool of all your female organs kind of puddled in a hole. She yeah, we, when we cesspool. advertise, we rarely use the words toxic cesspool. <laughs> but we'll consider that. Maybe uh, yours. <laughs> Well, um, that's probably another discussion, but <laughs> well, it, it is a tough area, and I, you know, as women, I think, are more open now and want to talk about those things, if it's something that women come in complaining of, it's sensation, and, and we see that all the time, and it's, it's, it's scary for women. They come in, they're very scared. I'm, I'm not going to have any relations because I have this there, they're, and I, we reassure there's no danger, but certainly it's an improvement. There are good data on improving sexual function after repairing the, these problems. Well, now, I've heard like of space women, junk. Yeah. Well, I, I've heard of women who have large babies who have incontinence problems mm -hmm. after they deliver. Does that contribute to them getting this condition as oh, well? If you have a large yes, baby. Very much so. And if you've ever seen a baby come out down there in that area that you so aptly described, <laughs> it. <laughs> Definitely is a uh, horribly traumatic experience for a woman's body. I can't think of anything else that's more traumatic on a natural basis for anything. Yeah. And so that causes initial nerve damage, initial muscle damage. But over time, those muscles and nerves decompensate, just like they do in the rest of your body. Our skin and everything as we age gets weaker. When it gets weaker, then we, we may notice, or women may notice, the actual problems and the actual prolapse. Right, when you're young, you know anything. Yeah. Well, this is Dr. Robert Harris with uh, Baptist Women's Specialty Center. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank Hope you. To come back. Yes. You Thanks. can tell he deals with lots of women. We'll be right back. <laughs> and their cesspools. <laughs> <laughs> oh.